Stir that up. And who just read that last one? Lucy said, glaze the inside, right, Lucy? Okay. Glaze the inside. So I'll get a pitcher here, and these pitchers are in the cabinet inside. And I'm going to fill it up. And glaze the inside by doing it. I'm going to fill it pretty much all the way. And watch this. I'm going to dump this back in right now so I don't wow. forget. Interesante. Oh, crap. I just. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to dump this all out now. As I dump it, I'm going to spin it a little bit so it coats the whole inside. This is a PG you ready? Oh. Oh. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to read the next step. It says, carefully sponge clean any accidental drips on the outside. I actually have some accidental drips. I kept forgetting to accidentally drip earlier in the day. Why are you so... So, okay, like so, blood. Tony, were you going to ask a question? Yeah. Why what were you going to ask? Why should you take it off? Why should you take it off? If you're going to reglaze it anyways. Um, well, Does it depend on there's two answers. Color? You don't have to take it off, but you will see it. I don't want to see it. Does, is it bad if you see it? Depends on what the drip looks like. If it's a good looking drip, maybe well, you want to leave it. Because like, would like, are we going to be blazing the outside a different color, or are we going to be the same one? Hold that thought for one second. Don't Genius. Come right now, Genius. to the group. Um, yes. The next step, Tony. You want to read the next step on the list? Uh, which one is it? Uh, I just said. Uh, I just did carefully sponge and clean any accidental drips on the outside. All right. Just clean um, it. Dip, pour, sponge, or brush glaze on the outside of your work. Boom. So that's what we're going to do now. But. Did you all notice how I wiped, every, I had a drip in one place, but I wiped everything equally. Did you notice that? Yeah. Do you know why I did it that way? No. So everything will give it that when you get it up. <laughs> See, I didn't get all the glaze off, so yes, it is even the, the residue that's left. Why else did I do it? There's a second reason. <laughs> what else did I evenly distribute around the, the water. pot? The water. The water, right? Remember, it's like a sponge. If I go crazy in one area, that area is going to get wet, the other is dry, and that's going to suck up more glaze. It's going to be uneven, and it's going to look bad. Okay, so glaze the outside. Um, several ways I could do this. I'm going to think the easiest way, I'm going to glaze the top half, let it dry, and then glaze the bottom half, then clean the bottom. So here it goes. I'm going to stir it. Even though I just stirred this a, a few seconds ago, I always give it a little stir right before you glaze. I cannot tell you how important it is to have the glaze well mixed before you... Do this. Let's see. What am I gonna do? Did you wax the bottom? What if it right? falls? Like the person before. Yeah. Um. In my head, I should have counted out loud, but in my head, I was counting a three-second dip. I dipped it, submerged it, and held it for three seconds. One one thousand. Two one thousand. Three one thousand. Comes out. one thousand. So about three seconds is a good amount of time to dip. To get a good coat. And it's see how quickly it's drying? Yeah. yeah. It's because it's really sucking that water up really fast. Alright, so I still got a couple drips around here. Run away. Come on, guys. Settle down. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Okay. So, I can almost touch it on the lip now. Actually, I'll just hold it but just below the lip. You should be patient, but you guys are in a hurry here. So. I'm going to do the bottom now. I'm going to overlap a little bit. And I will see a line where it's thicker. There, so I'm going to think about that. So three seconds. One, two, three. And since I didn't wax, I'm going to real quickly wash the bottom. And it's super important that the final wipe is with a really clean sponge. Make sure you clean your bottom thoroughly. No one at this staff will be wiping your bottoms for you. Please wipe your own bottoms. Get them nice and clean. Um, okay, so this is clean enough. And, and it did stay in the, the letters where my name was, which is fine because that's in the surface of the clay. It's not going to actually touch the shelf. All right, so that's clean enough. Now, if I had waxed the bottom, just one touch with the sponge, that would have been perfectly clean. It's easier. And I could have waited. Okay. All right, so that's glazing. Um, a couple other things you can see here. I used two different glazes. This is the Burkitt's Black with the Mystery. I did the Mystery inside first, and then I dipped in the Burkitt's Black to do the bottom, and then I did the Mystery on the top. 
Can you overlap glazes? Yeah. No. Yes, you can, but if I said three seconds is one full dip, and I'm going to dip it twice in two different glazes, how many seconds should I dip each glaze? Even the second half. 1.5 seconds, second half. Little math. So how, how do you say that? Or one second and two seconds, however you want to break it up. But it should be submerged in the glaze no more than about three total seconds. Okay? Thicker things will absorb glaze faster. Thinner things will absorb them slower. Wet things, slower. Dry things, faster. So all kinds of things make a difference. Any questions on any of that? This is a wash technique. You did your pinch pots. You carved your uh, pinch pots, right? Yeah. They ha and on a textured surface, a heavily textured surface, this is a great technique to enhance that texture. What I did is glaze the whole thing just like I did, but then I took the sponge and wiped it off. And I wiped it, the glaze off of the high areas, but it stayed in the low areas just like the name did. Okay? And so that can bring out your texture. What we'll have is this dry, toasty stone in the high areas and this colored glass in the low areas. Question, Tony? Um, would one glaze be enough? Or would, like, would you prefer to do more than one? Depends on what you're trying to do. Depends on what's going to look good. We're still mixing some of our glazes. They're coming out about a new glaze each day. And then we, these are the big buckets. We have one more big one to come out. And then we'll have um, some smaller buckets, but there'll be about eight, nine different glazes out here to choose from. So, something to think about. So there's nine different buckets of glaze. And there's not, those are nine options, obviously. But then I could overlap. Say I have glaze A and glaze B. I have to put glaze A over glaze B. I'm going to get a new glaze, glaze C. It's going to look completely different than A or B. Then, so A over B equals C. But if I do B over A, I'll get glaze D. So A over B looks different than B over A. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Slightly. So that's a fourth glaze combination that can come out of those two buckets. So there's a lot of different comp combinations you can come up with. Corey. What about mugs with slip on them already? Oh, Thank you. Good question. Great. The mugs with colored slip on them already. <laughs> um, mugs with slip on them already. You don't want, if you put glaze over this, I put the black glaze over this, you'll cover it up completely. So we have a clear glaze, transparent, clear, same thing. Um, and this one is, it's different that it's clear. It adds the shininess right now. You can see the image, you can see the color, but there's not going to be any shine. shine. It's dry, just like you see it now. Put the transparent over there, gives it that shine. But the transparent is a unique glaze in that you want it to always be pretty thin. Thinner on the transparent than you would any of the other glazes. You're just trying to add a little bit of shine, that's it. Um, if you get the glaze, the transparent on too thick, it gets kind of cloudy and hard to see through, and that tends to kind of not look that good. Um, so we usually keep that a little thinner. If you notice, you do the fingernail test, it'll seem a little watery to you, that's okay. But do still stir it very well. Harvey. Can you put, so like say, you want this like in stripes, can you put a wax in the middle and then just dip, you know? Yes, I could wax, I could use wax as a decorative technique. Um, say I have my bare pot, my bisque, I wax all over it, make a design, then dip it in there. I'm going to have glaze everywhere except for where I waxed. And where I wax is going to be unglazed, dry, stony clay. But what if you put... Glaze, then wax. There you go. That's what I was just about to say. But right, if I did or was do a double dipping scheme using <laughs> wax, I could do one dip like I did here, but maybe yeah. a two second dip. Then do my wax design over the glaze. Then dip in glaze B for a one second dip. And yes, I will have a glaze on glaze design that was created by Wax Resist. And that would actually count as a decoration technique. Remember I said Everything has to have some kind of decoration. What's that? Brilliant, Harvey. That is pretty good. Thanks, man. You, you've been watching YouTube, huh? Huh? Nothing. Um, any okay. other questions? <laughs> yes. After you finish with that, what do you do with it? Do you hit it up again? Good. That's, uh, I forgot. We have a checklist. What's next on our checklist? Oh. When in doubt, consult the checklist. Um, I did for a sponge. I wiped the excess glaze off the wax surfaces, so I cleaned the bottom. The second to third, um, who was just asking, Tamara? Was that you? Yes. What does it say? Second to bottom? No, the third to bottom. Oh, put your glaze work on the glazeware shelf outside in the Killam area. Kill and <laughs> you see what I'm pointing at? The back fence right there? The shelves that say glazeware all over it? That's where you're going to put the finished glaze stuff. Okay, there's still two more points on here. Cynthia, what's the second to bottom one say? Get 
Exactly. Everybody got that? You were reading along? Uh, yeah. so it says on the back of that form to sketch your piece. <laughs> so I would sketch this or this or this. It did different things. Say I'm, I'm glazing for one, one period and I'm going to glaze three things. I can do one checklist and do three rows of checks down the side. But then on the back, I'm going to sketch each piece I glazed um, so I know which one is which. And I'm going to label with arrows which glaze went where. This one's easy, I had Temaku, and then I might make a note um, that I did the wash technique. This one I'm going to put an arrow pointing Burkitt's Black down here and Mystery up here. Um, this one I'm going to say it was Burkitt's Black all over, I mean Temaku all over. Did I talk about the Mystery Glaze? No. 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 What color is it? Did anybody mystery. ask about the Mystery Glaze? Yeah. 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 Most people you ask you, about the Mystery Glaze. What's with the mystery? mystery? Okay, the Mystery <laughs> Glaze <laughs> is <laughs> called <laughs> Mystery because it's where we put scraps of glaze all the time. We don't throw glaze away in the trash, we don't put it down the sink. Anytime there's leftover glaze, a um, little bit, we're making a new batch or something, we dump it in the mystery bucket. So it's constantly changing. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> um, it's looking kind of nice right now. I just saw it. We unloaded a kiln yesterday and it's, it's, it's turning a really deep red. Can we see it? Um, later. Um, what was I going to say? When you clean up, when you clean up, you have to clean everything. Clean your buckets, clean your um, your sponges, put all the tools away. Wax you really don't need to do out here. In fact, don't do it out here. Do it at your work table. I did it here because we're having a demo here. Um, but these bucket, these um, pictures here, don't leave these laying around. <clears throat> Occasionally, I'll come out at the end of the day and I'll find a bucket or a pitcher half full of glaze. And I look at it and I'm like, hmm, it looks like that. And we have another glaze called Ohana Red that looks the same as that in the bucket. They look exactly the same. You can't tell them apart. And so I'm looking at this, I'm like, I don't know, is this Ohana Red, is this Temaku? And if you ever come across that same situation, don't guess. Come tell me right away, anytime you have a problem, anytime you make a mistake, anytime you have a question, and I will tell you the answer. Um, what I will usually tell you to do is dump it in the mystery because we just don't know. You can't mix these glazes in the buckets. Don't get glaze from one and the other. Don't put the lid of one on another. Don't put a whisk from one in another. They all have their own whisks. Keep everything separate. When you're done with the glaze, put the lid back on so you don't, when you stir, you don't splash into another glaze. Especially the white is super sensitive. It's white. You get anything in it, it's going to show. Okay? If you have an accident, just come tell me. A lot of times I can fix it if I know right away. Okay? But these are big buckets of glaze, $100, $150 in a bucket. If you screw it up, there goes yeah. 150 bucks, and everybody's not going to like it. <laughs> Any other questions? Jerry? Where's the Ohana red? It's not out here yet. We're still... You hear that drill? That's... Oh, oh that's neighbor. Right okay. You guys good? Yeah, yeah, Question? Yeah. Um, so if we found our pieces and we're not going to glaze them or use them, can we just leave them here? No, you are going to glaze them. And, right now? Yeah. Well, if you have a piece that you can wax right now, wax. That way you can glaze on block day. Um, if you've already waxed, great. Wait, you haven't because you didn't know how. Yeah. <clears throat> you can store your work. If you have your bisqueware, you can either put it in your locker. That's choice A. That's a preferred choice because it's safe. Or yeah. choice B is put it back on the bisqueware shelf until you get a glaze. Only put it on the glazeware shelf once it's totally ready to go in the kiln. If you're glazing and you're not done by the end of the period, you're going to finish the next day, don't put it on the glaze. Put it back on the bisqueware. Question, Samantha. Uh, We'll have eight different glazes that will hang some test tiles off the side and show you what they look like when they're fine. Question. Yes. Um, so if I were to have something like this, uh, would I be able to glaze the inside? And then, yes. Or would I just yeah, and you could put a different glaze on the inside. I so he's asking about colored slip, the, the slip pieces. Um, we didn't, most of you didn't put slip on the inside, and that's fine. You could do like the glossy black on the inside, then clear on the outside. You can do white inside, clear on the outside, but always clear on the outside. Yeah, over the do that because if you were to like, dip it out and then it splash up and then... Just like I showed... No, it, when I dip... Um, when, I, when I dip the second dip upside down here, I didn't reglaze the inside. Do you understand how that works? There's an air pocket in there that doesn't let the glaze go in. It goes in about that much. No, and that's I, fine. No, I understand that, but I'm saying like, like if I were to throw it up and then I put it upside down, couldn't it splash up onto the piece though? And then you would go to where it says wipe off any accidental drips. And, yeah. 
If it does, you just clean it off and then go and glaze the outside. Yes? Since we're wheel throwers and we'll have to be working on our wheels, how will we get the time for this? Block days are the best days to glaze. Ooh. So, Thursday. So, if you got something you can wax, get a wax. Any other questions? Ask me individually because I want to let people wax that are ready. Um, definitely clean your mess when you're done. Ready to go. Get, get some wax. Yeah.